بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسول الكريم ما بعد when somebody loves someone they will do anything that will make them happy and pleased you will follow every instruction every inshara every indication and not contravene do any action that will cause the anger even it is a small error you will be restless until you don't amend that error walillahi almathalu alaa for allah jalla jalalu as well we were anxious we were desirous for allah to find allah to recognize allah then we wouldn't want even a small error a small flaw in our life that will make allah unhappy forget this obedience sayyid ibn qayyim rahimahullah say al mu'minu la tatimu lahu ladhatu bi ma'siyatin abadan that a believer can never reach the climax of pleasure and enjoyment through disobedience you will never find any happiness in disobedience bal la yubashiruha illa wal huzn yukhalitu qalbahu that a person who perpetrates a sin grief worry anxiety overwhelms him he becomes so overwhelmed with grief and sorrow wa mata خلا قلبه من هذا الحزن فليبكي على موت قلبه in this when this heart becomes void of this grief then he should cry a lot because he should know that his heart is dead his heart is dead as hasan basri رحمه الله يسيء that لا يزداد المؤمن صلاحا الا ازداد خوفا the more reformed you become the more the fear of allah increases the more connected you become to allah the more your fear increases because you know who allah is you love allah you close to allah so a person will be always worried hatta yaqul la anju to a stage where he will come and say you know what i don't know if i will be saved from jahannam I don't know if I will be saved from hisab kitab and the interrogation amma al fasik fa yaqulu inna mithli kathir but a person who is a fasik a fajir a transgressor a disobedient person will say everybody is doing it man what's wrong everybody is doing it it's not so bad it's so light it's common so we start justifying our wrongs and we start finding excuses to validate our disobedience so a person has to learn to draw the line between haqq and batil wa tilka hudud allah wa may yata'adda hudud allah faqad zalama nafsa these are the parameters of allah when you contravene when you trespass these parameters You are a zalim and oppressor. Tilka hudud Allah fala taatadoha. These are the limits of Allah. Don't bypass. Stick to the parameters. It's a علماء مقولة is لل عبد ستر بينه وبين الله. Between you and Allah there is a a barrier. Between you and your Allah there is a barrier. وستر بينه وبين الناس. and a barrier between you and people for man hataka sitr and whoever destroys the barrier between he and between allah then he destroys the barrier between him and people means when you obey allah then allah will look after you but when you disobey allah then forget allah send in adab and calamities you will be grieved you will be stressed you will be in pareshani because of people when you when you've bypassed and uh, breached the 
the parda of protection, then you invalidate all protection. So our efforts are primarily on dunya, the vision of akhirat, and we are blind. On the vision of akhirat, we are blind. We have to make the invisible visible, and the visible invisible. Akhirat is invisible, make it visible. We need to love like we're going to die now, like we are going to account to Allah. And the visible dunya does, money does, people do, medicine do, doctors do, lawyers do, bank managers do, wealth does. Professions do, we have to negate all of it, make it invisible and have yaqeen that Allah puts shifa in the medicine. Allah puts life and death is in Allah's hands. Allah puts health, Allah puts sickness, Allah puts wealth. So Abu Darda radiyallahu anhu used to say, Sallu rak'atain fi dhulmati layl. Read two rakats in the darkness of the night لِظُلْمَةِ qabr to take out the darkness of the grave if you are awake in the darkness you'll have light in the darkness so what's good for a believer what action should be done that only in Allah's ilm that's why the Sula used to say إِنَّ النِّقْمَةَ الَّتِي تُقَرِّبُكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ that difficulty, that hardship, that trial, that adversity, that affliction which will make you close to Allah هِيَ أَفْضَلُ مِنَ النِّعْمَةِ الَّتِي تُبْعِدُكَ عَنِ اللَّهِ It is better than the bounties which take you further away from Allah. Rather go through trials and get close to Allah than through bounties and well that will take you further away from Allah. So the intention of taqwa and amongst the muttaqeen the benefits of having taqwa وَلَا دَارُ الْآخِرَةِ خَيْرُ وَلَا نِعْمَ دَارُ الْمُتَّقِينَ How pleasant, how excellent is akhirah and how perfect will be the abode for the muttaqeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepares for the muttaqeen, the abode in Jannah. As in Mawarid, Allama Haythami has mentioned in his kitab, and Allama Faqih Layth has mentioned in his kitab as well of a Sahabi who came to Nabi alayhi salam and said, Ayamna'uni sawadi, well, my dark complexion, my unpleasant. An unattractive appearance prevent me from Jannah. So the reply came, La walladi nafsi biadihi, by the oath of Allah. As long as you brought yaqeen in Allah, wa amanta bima ja'a bihi, Rasulahu, and you brought iman in his Nabi. So he said, Fa walladi akramaka bin nubuwa. I take oath on your nubuwa that I have brought Islam and accepted Allah and his Nabi. Eight months prior to this, but I've got an issue, I've got a problem, I've got a challenge. I've approached approach many people and due to my appearance, uh, my complexion, I have not been successful in getting a bride. And I'm from Bani Sulaim. So, Nabi Alayhi Salaam asked, Hal Shahid al Yawm Amr ibn Wahab is Amr ya? And he was from Taqif, who recently accepted Islam. So he was told, no. Do you know where his house is? Yes. Fadhab waqra. Go to him, knock on the door lightly. Thumma salim. Then make salam. And tell them, Zawwajani That my Nabi, Zawwajani Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fatatakum. Nabi alayhi wa sallam has married me to your daughter. And it was said about her, Waka Nat Jamila. She was very attractive. She was uh, endowed with beauty and gorgeous. And likewise, Allah had favored her with intelligence and astuteness. So her name was Atiqa. So he came to the door, he knocked, he made salam, they welcomed him. And uh, he said, Qad Nabi has married me to your daughter. 
so they were baffled they were surprised they weren't sure whether it is true not true etc i needed to be verified so he returned he returned to nabi ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they never gave him any conclusive answer so the daughter told the father that abata an naja an naja oh my father oh my father salvation we need an escape route qabla yafdahak al wahy before we are disgraced through revelation we are exposed nabi ali sallam has sent him and the dika is done faqad raditu bima radiyallahu li i'm happy what allah in his rasul have declared so the father suddenly quickly went he went to nabi ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said that uh, i seek forgiveness and i wasn't sure of the story how genuine it was so i accept we accept the proposal and i ask i ask for forgiveness so the the mahar was stipulated 400 dirhams and nabi ali sallam told sa'ad that go to your uh, these companions here and they will sort out your mahar go to uthman bin affan he went to him he took 200 dirhams and he gave him more and go to ali radiyallahu anhu take 200 he gave him and he gave him more and uh, He went to the bazaar to the marketplace and uh, he decided he was going to buy the the items needed for the nikah the person is getting married it's the first night so preparations for the nikah clothing for the nikah whatever necessary items are needed uh to prepare for that so As he was in the bazaar he heard an a proclaim an announcement ya khail allah irkabi irkabi o dasman of allah mount your horseman an nafir an nafir who's ready who's ready for months for months jamaat are leaving out who's ready cash naqad to go out in a part of allah an nafir an nafir the jamaat is getting ready who's ready to go out in a path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fa nadhara nadharatan ila as-sama he looked to the heavens and he said allahumma ilaha as-samawati wal ard aw rabb of the heavens and the earth wa ilaha muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la ja'alna hadhihi ad-darahim al-yawm fi ma yuhibbu allah wa rasulah today all spend this wealth where allah and his rasul loves he bought a horse he bought a sword he bought arrows and whatever he needed and he concealed himself He went with his horse. Some sahaba seen him. They said, "Man, had al Faris. Who's this horseman? We don't recognize him." Ali radiallahu anhu said, "Leave him. Maybe he's somebody from Bahrain or Sham." And he come came to learn Dean, and some show came for shahadat. So, as as the battle was getting ready in the forefront, and Nabi Ali sallam noticed him, and he said, "Asadun anta." is a sad na'am bi abi anta wa ummi ya rasul allah oh nabi of allah you got it right you got it right sadun jadduk you 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 made a lot of sacrifice he got into the battle and he was fighting and then the news came that sad has fallen nabi ali sallam went in a direction he lifted his head up ووضعه على حجره نبي عليه السلام put him in his lap ومسع عن وجه التراب النبي عليه السلام with his clothes wiped his face out and he said ما أتيب what a wonderful fragrance Allah and his Rasul loves you فبكى نبي عليه السلام cried ثم ضحك then he smiled ثم عرض ذن النبي عليه السلام ترن هيس فيس وقال ان هي سيد ورد الحوض ورب الكعبه هيز ريتش ذا هو ذا كوثر باي ذا اوث قسم اوف ذا كعبه ابو بور او لبابا رضي الله عنه زين هي سيد او نبي اوف الله وما الحوض وات از ذس حوض ذس بوند سيد ات از اي بوند ذات الله هيز جيفن مي ات از فروم ذس ديستنس تو ذس ديستنس يا ات از ستادد وات روبيز اند اميرلز 
ماؤه اشد بياضا من اللبن وايتا ذن ملك احلى من العسل مو سويتا ذن هني من شرب منه whoever drinks from it لا يذما بعدها ابدا he will never ever get thirsty he will never feel the pangs of thirst then sahaba said ya rasul Allah رأيناك بكيتا you cried then you smiled then you turned away so he replied, "Amma bukai, as my tears for bagay to shokan ila sad." It was out of shock and desire and ambition for my sad. Wa ma dhaki fa farihtu bi manzilatihi min Allah. And my elation was when Allah showed me His status and honor, what Allah gave him in akhirah. وَأَمَّا يَا رَاضِي And then I turned my face away فَإِنِّي رَأَيْتُ أَزْوَاجَهُ مِنَ الْحُورِ الْعِينِ I seen his wives from the حُورِ عِينِ يَتَبَادَرْنَهُ رَنِنْ رَشِنْ كَاشِفَاتِ But as they were rushing their feet, their calves Badiyat, the calves opened up and out of Haya Fa'aradhu Anu Haya Aminhun. The dust was the hose of my sabi out of modesty. I turned uh, my face away from them. And then Nabi alayhi salam told Sahaba that take his horse, take his weapons, go to his wife. Fakulu. And tell her, Inna Allah qad zawwajahu khayran min fattatikum. Allah has married him with damsels more better than the damsels, the girls of this world. So Sahaba were blind of what was around them and the world became invisible. Yafta became visible. It seems outwardly difficult but inwardly it was easy because Saba had their priorities, they had their perspectives in place, they knew what Allah and His Rasul wanted, what was the taqaza and what was the demand of the time. We have to also understand that Allah has sent us for a purpose, we have come into this world for an objective, our time is limited, our resources are limited, the journey is very long, desolate and filled with different trials and tribulations. We need to hand our matters over to Allah. So outwardly it will seem difficult but have tawakkul in Allah and Allah will make it easy. So there was a story of three people and it was decided they should be guillotined, the death penalty. As a scholar, a, a lawyer and a physicist. So they brought the scholar and they said, they put him under the guillotine and they said, what are your last words? He said, Allah, 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 who am I yunqidhuni? He's the one that will save me. They released the guillotine and it stopped by his neck. They were shocked. They said, set him free quickly. Maybe Allah's azab will come. Maybe Allah's azab will come. Then uh, the lawyer was brought, he asked him any last words, he said, I, I, la Allah kama I, I do not know Allah as a scholar of deen, as an alim knows, I know I was just and I fulfilled the laws, the justice system which Allah has commanded us, I am, I am free, I am, I am, I am innocent, I am innocent. And they released the guillotine and it just stopped by his nape. People became shocked and they said, let him go, free him. And he was freed. And eventually the physicists came and they said, you know any last words? He said, I don't know anything. Kama arifatil alim wa ka'ada little hami, mahami. I don't know anything like what ulama know. I don't know anything what lawyers, justice know. I don't know anything about that. What I do know is that in the rope of the guillotine there is a knot, it's preventing the guillotine from falling full completely. So people looked up and they found that what he said was true. They removed the knot 
they released the guillotine and his head was severed. His head was severed. So sometimes we need to hand matters over to Allah and His Rasul and rely on them. It's not to, nothing to do with logic, nothing to do with intellect, nothing to do with intelligence. It's all got to do with handing our matters over to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Amal for today is Inna Allah ta'ala yuhibbu al-ghani al-haleem al-muta'affif Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that person who does not rely on others. He is independent of others compared to a person who is a fajir, a sail, who goes and continuously back to people. So our attention needs to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in con all conditions. May Allah give us tawfiq, make him amal. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ